All right, so we've done a couple of videos about how we can download things using fetch. So we make Ajax requests to the server, we get some JSON data sent back to us. Fair enough. There's another part to it though. What if you need to send parameters to the server? What if you need to pass up some data that's going to say, okay, great, I want to get a whole bunch of information about something, but only about a specific user or only about a specific post or only about a specific article. We need to be able to send information to the server and we can do that with fetch as well. So I've got a couple of examples here uh, using the same JSON placeholder code that we were using from before. Uh, if I'm doing slash posts, I'm going to be requesting posts come back from the server. I can append a query string. Now a query string is anything that is part of the location, so you'd see it in the browser in the location bar. Actually here, let's take this and go over to here. We'll open up a new tab. There we go. So I'm going to truncate that. All right, this posts sends me back a whole whack of posts here. Uh, user ID 100. Okay, so we're getting 100 items being sent back here. If I wanted to filter this list, this website is set up so that I can pass in query string parameters like this. So I'm saying user ID is equal to, let's say, 8. Enter. Now I'm getting an array that only has 10 items. It's all of the posts made by user ID 8. So the post ID 71, 72, up to 80. So there's 10 different posts, all where user ID match. We can, um, I believe it also lets us filter by post ID. No, it doesn't. Okay, so posts, we can filter by user ID. We can ask for albums. We can ask for to-dos. There's a whole bunch of different things that we can get. To-dos, I think there's 500 that come through here. Or 200 for the, uh, the to-dos, maybe the albums. That gives us 100. We can filter these. User ID. Oops, we have to be very case sensitive. User ID is six. There we go. So here are the albums belonging to user ID six. So it's filtering the list. So we need to be able to send this information to the server. Well, with a get request, if our method is set to get all we really need to do is append a question mark and then the name and values that we want to pass up. If there were multiple name and values, let's say and post ID equals 65 and so on, this is how you would do it if there was multiple things that you needed to send up to whatever server you're communicating with. It doesn't have to be this JSON placeholder one. You'll have a name and a value with an equal sign between them and then each of these pairs has an ampersand between them. And the whole thing begins with a question mark. This whole thing together is called the query string. So get requests use query strings. Now with a post, you can also have query strings that are involved, but most of the time, if you're using post, you're not using the query string to send data. You are using form data or a buffer array or a byte string, some, some other matter, some other uh, type of data is being passed along. Okay, so what I want to do is with the get request, I'm going to be taking this root and I'm going to say that let URI equal root plus this. So the base plus this little bit right here, that's my URI that I'm going to be requesting.
question. My method is get. And then we've got the standard fetch with using promises. The response comes back if the response is OK. So if my HTTP status code was acceptable. If it's not, then I'm going to throw an error. And we'll say bad HTTP. If it does work, then I want to take the response and the response object uses the body interface. There's, no, there's a body object as well, and it has a method called JSON, which we're going to use. The JSON, uh, sorry, the response object has this JSON method because it implements the body interface. Don't worry too much about that. Just know that there is a JSON method that you can call on the response object, and we want to return that. So this will create a promise It'll take the response, it'll go off, it'll convert, take the JSON from the response, return it, and then it gets passed down into here. That's my data right there. And then we could console.log or put it into the HTML file, whatever we want to do with it. All right, so there's the basics. We've got a basic request set up using get, and it's going to fetch the posts that belong to user ID number one back to our web page here. So if we posts user ID equals one, this is what we should get. There should be 10 of them. That's the data that we get back. Refresh. There we go. So the HTML file, the JavaScript file, and there it is. JSON placeholder.typical.com slash posts question mark user ID equals one. That's my query string and click on that. There's the headers and the preview. Perfect. There we go. There's our 10 objects. So it's an array with our 10 objects inside there. That's exactly what we expected to get back. So that is the simplest way of sending data to the server. The next way, if we are using a POST request. So let's change this up. Let's say POST um, I'll set our mode to course. And the next thing is if we're sending data to the server, we need to define a body. Because an HTTP request and an HTTP response are made up of two parts. There's the headers and the body. So headers, we've talked about that in previous videos. Looking down inside here, we've got the response headers, we've got the request, and there's the query string that was sent. So these are the headers. The body is the actual file that comes back. So in the case of the HTML file, here, that's the response. This file, that is the response. That's the body of the response. So there's headers, and then there's the body. When we are making a post request to the server, it means that we are supplying some headers, but we're also going to be providing a body. So there's going to be a chunk of data, a file, or some information that's formatted as a buffer array, or a blob, or in our case, some form data that we're going to be sending to the server. We want to be able to send this chunk of data up to the server as if we were sending a file to the server. So the server can send files to us, we can send files to the server. That's what POST is going to let us do. So we're going to have something inside here. I'm going to have a variable called form data. This is going to be the stuff that I'm sending to the server. I don't have to change anything else here. I'm going to the same page. Actually, we are going to remove the query string. We don't need that. So we're going to make a request to the posts page. And we are going to be submitting a brand new post, something that we want to insert into the, into the system. And we are going to be sending a bunch of data to the server. So we're going to define a thing called form data. 
and it's going to be a new form data object. Now this is a built-in method, works alongside of any AJAX request. You are basically building in code a representation of what you would have in a form. Just picture any web form that you've filled out on any web page. There's a whole bunch of fields that you're filling out. Every one of those fields has a name. That's what we're doing with these form data objects. So we're going to create the fields by calling the append method. And then there's a name and a value. There's a file name here because this is going to let us up actually upload attached files as well. We're not going to do that in this video. That'll be another video. But the append method allows us to add things into this collection of form data. So I know that inside of these guys right here, there is a user ID defining who it belongs to, and then there's a title, and then there's a body. So I'm not going to create the ID. The ID is going to be created by the server when it accepts our data and puts it into its database. We just need to define user ID, title, and body. So there will be something called user ID, which has a value. Let's say user ID 3 is the one that we're adding. And then form data needs to have a title. And that's going to have some text. And form data append body. And there's more data. Okay, so we've created this form data object and we've added these three fields to it. And that data becomes the body of what we're sending to the server. We're using the post method, which allows us to attach a body. With a get request, you're not allowed to attach a body. That's why we're using post. We're creating this new request, the URI, we defined the options right here, and then we're sending it to the server. And we're saying, okay, if the response works out fine, take the data, and then we're going to write it out. Convert it to JSON, the contents of that file. So let's see what we get. All right. So we got a 201 created. That was our HTTP status code coming back. So 200 is just okay. 201 is okay, I've created something. So this is the server telling us that, yeah, everything worked out fine. I got what you sent me, and I've created something. Now let's go and take a look in our console. Hey, there we go. We have an object with an ID 101. Remember back in here when we looked at posts? Go all the way to the bottom. ID 100. That was the highest number. With us, we sent that new object off to the server, and it sent back something that says, OK, I've created something. The new ID is 101. And this is just something that JSON Placeholder does for us. It is mimicking what a server would actually do. It's creating the stuff, and then it's sending back the ID saying, yep, you're good to go. I've created it. I've accepted what you've sent me. I've created a new object. Here's the ID of the new object that I've created. We're not actually adding anything to their data. They have the same test data all the time. We're not adding to their test data. We're just simulating that process. So we have get requests that use query string parameters. And we have posts, which have a body made up of typically form data. We will look at doing other methods as well. but. Form data is probably the most common way, and it's just name value pairs, just like you have in a form. All the different fields in the form, we're attaching it as the body of our request, so it's inside the options of our request, and then that request is being passed to the fetch, and as long as it's okay, we're taking our JSON and we can do whatever we want with it. So we had this form data here, we could have used it down inside this function as well, along with that new ID that we got back from the server. All right, great. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.